Hey there, in this video we are going to look at subtracting fractions. We'll look at subtracting fractions with the same denominator and then also when we have different denominators. So we are going to start when we have the same denominator. So just like adding fractions with the same denominator, it really is truly the exact same. It's just we have subtraction instead. So we will take A minus B instead of what we did in our last um, examples with adding fractions where we did A plus B. So let's go ahead and subtract the following fractions. So 2 sevenths minus 4 sevenths. We already see that we have common denominators, so we don't need to do any multiplying to get the denominators to be the same. So we can go ahead and just subtract across the top. We can do 2 minus 4, which is going to give us a negative 2. So our numerator will be negative 2. Our denominator will remain the same, which is 7. So negative 2 over 7 is our answer. This can be written in many ways. So I want to point out that this could be written as negative in front of the fraction 2 sevenths. It could be written with a negative and then a parenthesis set with 2 sevenths. It could be written technically even with the negative on the bottom, although that's not as common. So these are all options of ways how we can write negative 2 sevenths in a different format. So looking at subtracting fractions with different denominators, just like when we add fractions with different denominators, we need to get the denominators to be the same using either the LCD method, which is what we will practice first, or we can just go ahead and multiply the denominators together, and that can be our new common denominator, even though it may not be the least common denominator. So either option is fine, and then once we get the denominators the same, then we just go ahead and subtract just like you would with addition. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first two examples. We see 1 half minus 1 sixth. We see that our 2 and our 6, our denominators do not match. So we do need to turn these fractions into different fractions where they have the same denominator. So we can see we have 2 and we have 6. If you think about the bigger number, 6, 2 can actually be multiplied by a whole number to give us 6. 2 times 3 gives us 6. So if we multiply the denominator by 3, then we need to also multiply the numerator by 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So again, 1 half is the same as 3 6. And now that we've done that, 1 6 will match in terms of the common denominator. So we do have the LCD of 6, the least common denominator of 6. And that allows us to go ahead and subtract these fractions. So 3 minus 1 is going to give us 2 on top. 6 is going to stay 6 on the bottom. And then we just simplify from there because these are both even. We can divide them by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 1 third would be our final answer. Now on number 2, we have a similar problem. It's just this time, unfortunately, even though the denominators still are not matching, we can't use the same exact method that we used over here, the same process, because 3 does not have a whole number that we can multiply it by to give us 7. So what we are going to have to do is look at that bigger number and think of the multiples of 7. So we've got 7, either add 7 to that or do 7 times 2 and you get 14. So far, neither of those are divisible by 3. So we can't turn 3 into either of those with multiplication of a whole number. Then we go on to the next one, either add uh, 7 to 14 or go back to 7 times 3 this time, which is 21. 21 is divisible by 3. So what that means is we are actually going to turn the denominator of both of these fractions into 21. So in order to do that, we have to think about 3 and 7 and what we multiply those by separately to turn them into 21, respectively. So 3, we can multiply 3 by 7, and that's going to turn it into 21. If I multiply the denominator by 7, then I need to multiply the numerator by 7 as well. 2 times 7 is 14. So 14 over 21 is 2 thirds in a different format with 21 as the denominator. Additionally, we will take 7 and turn that into 21 by multiplying by 3. If I multiply that by 3, then I need to multiply my numerator by 3 as well. 4 times 3 is 12. And so now I go ahead and I just subtract my top two numbers, my numerators. So 14 minus 12 is 2. 
And then my denominator remains the same as 21. So 2 over 21 is my answer. I cannot simplify that any further. I can try, but the only thing they are both divisible by is the number 1. So 2, two over 21 is my final answer. Now, just a quick reminder of that alternate option. So sometimes we have problems where um, the least common denominator may not be something that you want to worry about finding. Um, and you may just wanna use this alternate method instead. So if you are uncertain about the LCD or not as comfortable with it, you can always just remember to take the denominators and multiply those together to be your new common denominator, even though it will not necessarily be the least common denominator. So let's take a look at um, our example here. Subtract the following fractions as written using that alternate method. So 1 half minus 1 sixth, instead of worrying about what the least common denominator is, we can just go ahead and multiply this denominator and this denominator together. 2 times 6 gives us 12. And so we know that our new denominator could be 12, and that will work. When we do that, 2 times 6 is what gets us to 12, which means I do need to multiply the 1 by 6 as well on top. So 1 times 6 is 6. So 6 twelfths would be 1 half written with 12 as the denominator. 1 sixth, we can multiply 6 by 2 to give us 12, and then 1 times 2 to give us 2 on top. Now we have the same denominator. We have 12 on both of these. Even though we could have gotten six in those um, spots, just like we did on the, the previous um, examples, we could have gotten six in that denominator spot, which might have been simpler in terms of only having to multiply the one fraction. But if you don't see that right away, this is a great method that does work as well. So it really just depends on what you are comfortable with. So now that we have the common denominator of 12, we are going to go ahead and subtract across the top. 6 minus 2 is 4, and then we leave our denominator of 12. So we go ahead and we can simplify by dividing by 4 on top and bottom. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So 1 third is our answer. Just like when we did this with the least common denominator method, we got 6 on the denominator. So when we got 6 in the denominator, we ended up with 3 6 minus 1 6, which came out to be 2 6 which we then simplified to one third. So just as a side note here, this is what we did on the last page with the other method. Both of these methods turn out to give you one third, so you can use either method. So in summary, we can subtract fractions with the same denominator by just subtracting the numerators across the top and leaving the same denominator in your answer. As a reminder, with different denominators, when we're subtracting, you have two methods you can use that are really pretty much the same method. It's just whether you are going to find the least common denominator or whether you will just multiply the denominators together, which sometimes comes out to be the LCD, the least common denominator, but sometimes it comes out to be a larger number than the least common denominator, but it is still a common denominator and it still works. So once you get that common denominator using one of those two methods, then we just go ahead and subtract using that first method um, once we have the same denominator.